In the age of battleships, oceans decided empires, but the seas of the future belong to machines. The ocean has always been humanity's greatest battlefield. From the mighty dreadnoughts of World War I, with their massive guns thundering across the waves, to the carrier fleets that ruled the Pacific in World War II, launching waves of aircraft into the sky. Dominance at sea meant dominance in war. Navies poured billions into constructing these colossal vessels, symbols of national power, crewed by thousands of brave sailors who faced the fury of storms and enemy fire alike. But now a silent revolution is underway, a revolution driven not by sailors or steel, but by drones. These unmanned machines are slipping into the waters, changing everything we thought we knew about naval combat. They're fast, they're cheap, they're deadly, and they're rewriting centuries of maritime strategy. In this new world, even the largest warships ever built, those floating cities of steel and technology are suddenly vulnerable to something no bigger than a speedboat. Before we dive in, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to Defense Archives. This is the story of how drone warfare is transforming naval combat, threatening the old order, and ushering in an era where intelligence trumps size. Welcome to a deep dive into the future of warfare at sea. Let's explore how we got here and where it's all heading. For decades, naval combat followed one unbreakable rule. The bigger the ship, the greater the power. Battleships like the HMS Dreadnought revolutionized warfare in the early 20th century rendering entire fleets obsolete overnight with their all-big-gun design. Destroyers zipped across the waves as escorts, protecting the giants from submarines and aircraft. And aircraft carriers? They became the kings of the sea, projecting power thousands of miles from home with squadrons of fighters and bombers ready to strike. Each of these ships was an engineering marvel, a floating fortress packed with firepower, radar, missiles, and prestige. Navies around the world competed to build bigger, better, more armored behemoths. The U.S. Navy's Iowa-class battleships, for instance, displaced over 50,000 tons and could hurl shells 20 miles away. Carriers like the USS Nimitz carry up to 90 aircraft and a crew of over 5,000. These weren't just weapons. They were statements of might, deterrence that could win wars without firing a shot. But today, a vessel small enough to fit on a truck can threaten them all. Imagine something the size of a small boat, unmanned, racing across the ocean at 40 knots, packed with explosives or missiles. No crew to worry about, no lives at risk on your side. That's the power shift we're seeing. It began quietly, almost unnoticed, in the early 2000s, when the U.S. Navy started testing its first unmanned surface vessels. At first, they were harmless scouts, little more than remote-controlled boats equipped with cameras and sensors. They swept for mines, gathered intelligence, acted as the eyes and ears for the manned fleet, extending its reach without putting sailors in harm's way. But technology didn't stop there. AI navigation systems improved dramatically, allowing these drones to plot courses around obstacles, evade detection, and even make decisions in real time. Communications became faster and more secure, with satellite links beaming data across the globe. And soon, inevitably, these machines were armed. What started as reconnaissance tools evolved into lethal hunters capable of carrying torpedoes, missiles, or even kamikaze payloads. The fall of the giants had begun, not with a bang, but with the quiet whir of electric motors on the water. And as this story unfolds, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to Defense Archives to explore more remarkable military histories. Now back to the story. October 2022, the Black Sea. In the port of Sevastopol, Russian warships lie anchored under the cover of darkness, their crews resting after another tense day in the ongoing conflict. The water is calm, the night air thick with the salt of the sea. Then on the horizon, small blips appear on radar screens, too small for missiles, too fast for submarines, and moving with eerie precision. A fleet of unmanned sea drones launched from Ukrainian positions, races across the waves. They're low profile, hard to spot, silent as ghosts, propelled by electric engines that leave no heat signature for infrared sensors. Russian sailors scramble to action stations. Machine guns chatter into the night, tracers arcing over the water. Searchlights sweep frantically, illuminating foam and shadows. 
One drone takes a direct hit, exploding in a fireball that lights up the sea. Another swerves wildly to avoid the barrage, but one, sleek, determined, makes it through the defenses. It slams into the Admiral Makarov, a modern Russian frigate worth over $100 million, packed with advanced radar and anti-aircraft systems. The impact triggers a massive explosion, crippling the ship and sending shockwaves through the naval world. This wasn't a lucky torpedo or a daring submarine attack. It was a drone strike, executed by a weapon costing less than $300,000. Built from off-the-shelf parts guided by GPS and simple AI, it had outmaneuvered one of Russia's prized assets. This was the first true sea drone war in history, and the world took notice. Military analysts pored over grainy footage and satellite images, realizing that the rules had changed forever. No longer could massive warships rely on their size and armor for protection. The Black Sea incident proved that asymmetric warfare, where the underdog uses cheap, innovative tech against superior forces, had come to the oceans. Ukraine, with its makeshift drone fleets, had humbled a naval superpower, inspiring militaries everywhere to rethink their strategies. The United States Navy calls it the Ghost Fleet, a network of unmanned ships designed to operate thousands of miles from any human control, like spectral guardians of the sea. These vessels are guided by advanced AI, satellite links, and swarm coordination algorithms that allow them to work together seamlessly, almost like a living organism. They can form up in precise formations, scout enemy waters for threats, launch weapons with pinpoint accuracy, and do it all without risking a single sailor. One of the pioneers in this fleet is the Sea Hunter, a sleek trimaran hull that looks more like a futuristic speedboat than a traditional warship. No crew quarters, no bridge for officers to stand watch, no flag waving proudly in the wind. Yet this autonomous vessel can cross entire oceans on its own, using sonar to track stealthy submarines, deploy countermeasures against incoming threats, and feed live intelligence back to carrier strike groups hundreds of miles away. In tests, the Sea Hunter has sailed from California to Hawaii and back without human intervention, navigating through rough seas and crowded shipping lanes. But the Ghost Fleet is more than just one ship. It's a vision of the future. Imagine dozens of these unmanned vessels patrolling contested waters, linked in a digital hive mind. They communicate in real time, sharing data on enemy positions, weather patterns, and potential targets. If one detects a submarine, it alerts the swarm, which then converges like wolves on prey. Every test pushes the boundaries, blurring the line between machine and sailor, between a ship and an algorithm. The Navy is investing billions in this program, partnering with companies like Boeing and DARPA to make it a reality. The Ghost Fleet isn't just about exploration, it's about dominance in an age where humans stay safe on shore. The old naval playbook is being torn up and rewritten from scratch. In the past, a single destroyer might carry 300 crew members, each trained to handle complex systems under fire. It was a symphony of human coordination, but now picture a swarm of 50 autonomous sea drones, each small, agile, and expendable, outmaneuvering that destroyer. They attack from multiple angles at once, overwhelming its radar with false targets, dodging anti-aircraft fire with evasive maneuvers programmed by AI. The U.S. Navy's Aegis Defense System, a marvel of modern engineering, was built to intercept incoming missiles, high-speed threats streaking through the sky. But it's not optimized for a dozen speedboats skimming the waves like guided torpedoes, changing direction unpredictably. Defending against them requires firing expensive missiles or guns. Draining resources quickly, each defensive missile costs nearly a million dollars, while an attacking drone might run you around 20,000. Built from commercial parts like those in recreational boats, with added explosives and guidance systems. The economics alone are reshaping warfare. It's no longer about quality over quantity, it's quantity over quality. Swarm tactics, inspired by nature, think schools of fish or flocks of birds, allow cheap drones to saturate defenses. A carrier group might fend off a few, but hundreds? That's a different story. Navies are shifting focus. Instead of building fewer massive ships, they're investing in producing drones by the thousands. It's the new naval math. 
You've been watching Defense Archives. We've delved deep into the waves of change, from historical shifts to futuristic swarms, exploring how drones are redefining naval warfare. If you found this breakdown insightful, hit that like button, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you never miss the stories shaping the future of military power. Your support keeps us sailing forward.